Welcome to the Breakup Recovery Podcasts by your host, Barbara Stevens. Discover the wisdom and remarkable insights of Barbara Stevens, breakup recovery mentor, author, and public speaker. Barbara offers programs and solutions for any breakup so you can turn your life around, create lasting changes for the better, and embrace life again. Hello and welcome to Breakup Recovery Podcast. I'm Barbara Stevens and I'm a Breakup Recovery Mentor. In this episode, I have with me Jill Sockwell. Now, Jill has co-authored a book, The Optimist's Guide to Divorce. So welcome, Jill. Thank you, Barbara. It's great to be here. Now, tell me, Jill, how did you come up with that title, The Optimist's Guide to Divorce? Well, you know, whenever I was going through my separation, I really wanted to find uplifting advice. And unfortunately for me at that time, I really couldn't find anything that quite fit the bill. So whenever I had the idea to write a book that would be something that would be positive and uplifting and really kind of be a a how-to, if you will, for separation and divorce for women, I, I wanted it to be something that quickly communicated that it was looking on the bright side and trying to make the best of what is a difficult situation. Yes, I guess when you are going through a divorce, it is so easy to stay in the negative. And, you know, friends and family and work colleagues, they often don't even know what to say to you. And and they definitely don't try and make light of any situation, do they? Oh, no. I mean, I think what you're saying is absolutely correct, that attitude is really everything. And it's easy to get caught up in really negative cycles of behavior and patterns that don't serve us whether it's complaining about the ex endlessly, which really keeps your focus on him, his actions, and keeps you reactive instead of active, right? Or perhaps giving up on self-care and exercise and getting enough sleep. And, And we try to really encourage women to turn the focus onto themselves, to not complain, to not get caught up in those cycles, because divorce, it really typically is a marathon and not a sprint. And so you want to have self-care so that you can get through the long process and really come out the other end all the better for it. And is that the sort of strategies that you used when you got through your own divorce? Well, one of the things that really helped me more than almost anything else was being matched up with a friend who was also separated. I live in a suburban town where it kind of seemed like everyone was a happy family, you know, but me, you know, how kind of when you're going through something, you think, where's everyone else who's going through this? And it was such an isolating experience initially that whenever I was introduced to Suzanne, who I wrote the book with, it really helped me. And what we decided to do was kind of increase the experience and the positivity by starting our own divorce club. And so by having this divorce club and creating a micro community to support one another and learn from each other, it made what is a really isolating experience something far more bearable. And what we try to do is take that and put it in the book. So how often did you meet at this divorce club? Well, we started the club in March of 2013. And we tried to meet approximately every month to every six weeks. We could believe it. We had about 50 women at our first meeting. Wow. How did, how did you advertise that or get the word out that you had a divorce club going? Uh, there were a couple of local kind of newspapers that did stories about it. We put up a few signs at like the coffee shop and mostly it was word of mouth and Facebook. So we were surprised, you know, here all along, all of these women are really going through it, you know, on their own. And, you know, luckily for all of us that we kind of, you know, they found out about it, they joined up and we were all able to help each other. What a great idea, because that's 50 people that were feeling isolated, just like you thought you were isolated. You thought that everybody else in the community was living a happy family life. And then you advertised this divorce club and 50 people turned up. Yeah, it was unbelievable. One of the things we do in the book, the book is divided into three sections. Deal, which is kind of taking on the things you need to do right away, uh, like tell the kids, confront your finances, figure out where to live, heal, um, help readers work through their anger and their loss, kind of develop new plans of action if they're feeling stuck. 
And then the last section is reveal, which celebrates hard work and kind of helps you have a stronger sense of self and work on creating your own community and and maybe dating again. But the very last chapter, chapter 17, is all about the divorce club, how we started it, kind of like how to sidestep any problems that you might run into, things we did that we thought really worked out. And we have online on our website PDFs and everything any reader or any listener would need to start their own divorce club. Wow, that's fantastic. Tell me, how did you write the book with a co-author? And I guess the co-author's name is Suzanne Riss. One of the questions people ask us a lot is, are you still speaking? Like, <laughs> How could you take on a project like writing a book uh, with someone else? On top of, of course, having our other jobs and raising our children, And I think one of the reasons it worked out so well is we have kind of have complementary personalities. Suzanne is the former editor of Working Mother magazine, and she was really, really great at the kind of the big picture of the schedule and the master plan and the flow of the book. And she was the one who wanted to do the typing when we would sit together, and that was fine with me. So I think just, just being able to work well together and let one another's strengths shine through really um, really made it possible. How would you describe the book to someone and tell them what it was about? I think that the book is really a how-to for divorce. And what shocked me more than anything was whenever I went to the bookstore to, to buy books for myself when I was first separated was the lack of resources. 1.5 million women in the United States every year get separated. So, I mean, you would think based on that number, that that audience, that there would be, you know, overwhelming amounts of materials available. And what I found were that there were kind of famous memoirs where women have gone around the world to find themselves kind of in one section, but that's one woman's story, right? Mm -hmm. Or clinical books written by field experts, be it a, a marriage counselor or a lawyer or a therapist, But there wasn't really something that was kind of in the middle that was women supporting women who have been through it, offering a variety of paths, if you will, from different points of view. The book has 12 different characters. They're all composites built on uh, two or more real life women. So you can follow the trajectory of, of different stories, really, from the beginning, from the conversation where either the women heard Uh, from their husbands that they were uh, unhappy and wanted a divorce or the women themselves were the ones telling the husbands that and you can follow the different characters through the whole story. Wow. Are these based on true stories? Yes. Each woman is based on two or more real life women. So that's a really interesting concept, isn't it? Well, it seemed like you know, there, you might not just recognize yourself as a reader, you know, in one of the stories, but by offering up different paths, different choices people made, different courses of action, we felt like it would be a way to really offer up a lot of different solutions to some really challenging problems that, that women go through whenever they're divorcing. And what's the feedback been from people who have read the book? It's been really, really positive. We have all five-star reviews on Amazon, which is great. But what I really enjoy is at least a couple times a week getting emails from people from all over the country saying uh, how much they've enjoyed the book and how much it's meant to them. One woman uh, from Houston said, you know, this is the only thing that's helping me because I, I feel like I can't talk to my friends and family. They don't understand. None of them have been divorced. And when I open the book and I read the book, I feel like I'm surrounded by friends who have been through it, and it's it's a real comfort. So it's it's been so nice and so inspiring to get those emails from readers. And it's nice to know that your book has been read by people and it is helping them get through their breakup. Yeah, I mean, I think it's – I'm really proud of it. I know Suzanne is too because it's something that, you know, we can look back on, you know, if we're both a couple years now out from our divorces, but to be able to say we took something that was one of the most challenging things that, you know, we've ever dealt with in our lives and try to turn it into something positive and as a real learning experience and helping other people who are going through it has been, you know, a great source of accomplishment for us. Jill, if there was just one piece of advice that you could give to a woman who's just broken up, what would it be? 
Oh, that's a good question. I think what I would tell them would be that it's going to get better and that uh, the advice would be to look for ways to grow from what is a difficult experience and to acknowledge that it is a difficult experience and know that some days will be better than others. You don't have to, you know, wake up at six o'clock and train for a marathon. You don't have to volunteer to be the PTA president. You can continue to tell yourself, like, I'm going through a really challenging time and choose to look for the positives within that. And what I often tell people is there's no way, I think, to kind of come out of a really bad breakup or a divorce the same as you went into it. You will be different. So look for every opportunity to change for the better. That's great advice. Sometimes it is hard, though, to look for the positives when you're in that deep depths of despair and anguish and hurt and you're still full of rage. So what is one way that you can look for the positives? How can you turn that around in just a small way? I think one of the things that that helps me whenever I was feeling that way, uh, I made a gratitude list. And so even if I wasn't feeling at that moment, you know, amazing or even okay, I could read what I knew were true facts, real like hard data of things that were great about my life that I couldn't kind of talk my way out of. Like those were facts. Like I have two healthy, beautiful girls, you know, I myself was lucky that I have good health, you know, and the list went on and on and kind of acknowledging that even though I was feeling like I was in a really bad place personally and emotionally at that time, there were still so many good things in my life was something that really helped me. And another thing was I gave myself a little mantra where so anytime I was feeling, you know, like, oh, this is horrible or I'm having a bad day, I would just say, you know, Jill, you're doing a great job and it's going to get better. And I actually say that out loud and that really helped me. Yes, I do like the idea of the gratitude journal and the affirmations are so powerful that it can change that negative thought into a positive one or it can just stop that cycle of negativity. Right. I mean, I think it is easy and and we see our friends do it. We see our families do it. And it's easy to recognize in other people when you can just see someone kind of going on a, a downward spiral of complaining about something, anything. And I think doing those two things can help stop one of those little cycles in its tracks. Jill, if people want to find out more about you and look for your website and the book, The Optimist Guide to Divorce, where can they find that information? Uh, Suzanne and I have a Facebook page for the book where uh, we post different readings and events that we're doing. Um, So you can look for us on Facebook. You can just look for The Optimist Guide to Divorce. And we also have a website, www.optimistguidetodivorce.com. And they can purchase the book from the website? Yes, there's links on the website. You could also, of course, support your local bookstore. If they carry the book, that would be lovely. Or you could go to Amazon.com and order the book as well. Thank you, Jill, for coming on to Break Up Recovery podcast and sharing your message, your book, the ideas about it, and particularly the Divorce Club. I think that's a very powerful way that women who are going through a divorce can get together and support and nurture each other to help them get through their divorce or breakup. And telling us more about your book, it sounds such an interesting concept to think of the positives. So thank you once again, Jill, for telling us about it. Thank you for sharing that, this information so that other women who are going through their breakups and are feeling lost can look for your book and find a lot of comfort from it. So thank you once again, Jill. Thank you, Barbara. It's been great to be here. And I just would say that you know, no one should be intimidated about starting a club because it doesn't have to be 50 people or even 20. When Suzanne and I were doing a reading in uh, Montclair, I remember that the woman in the front row turned around to the woman behind her and said, you know, hey, you know, why don't we start a club? And they were like, OK. And they, you know, came in strangers and they left, you know, future club mates. So reach out to the people that you know who are going through this or put the word out that you're looking to start a group and, and you might be surprised 
how much support and friendship you get out of it. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode number 098, The Optimist's Guide to Divorce. I love the concept of her book and I think it is definitely worth seeking out and reading so you can get the tips and strategies to help you through your divorce process. On another note, if you've been listening to previous Breakup Recovery podcast episodes, you know that I'm coming up to my 100th episode soon and I wanted to do something different than I have previously done for this 100th episode, which is scheduled for end of September, which is in about two weeks' time. And this would be the last chance to email me with any questions you would like me to cover in this special episode. So there are a couple of ways you can send through your questions or your comments, and that would be to go to my website, barbarastevens.com.au, and click on the contact button. Or another way would be to go to my Facebook page and hit the message button and do it that way, whatever works best for you. I look forward to receiving your questions, your comments, your observations and recording my 100th episode of Breakup Recovery Podcast. And the last thing I'd like to say is be gentle on yourself. You deserve happiness. If you would like to hear previous Breakup Recovery podcasts, visit barbastevens.com.au. Connect with Barbara Stevens on social media with Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor on Facebook and at You'll Be Okay on Twitter. Read further blogs, view webinar replays, and download your free ebook, Three Easy Steps to Surviving Your Breakup, and much more at barbastevens.com.au.